we've tested hole saws as well as drill bits, but what about annular cutters? They're supposed to be far better than both of those options, especially for larger holes. Let's get the testing underway and see which brand is the best. In the first test, we'll see which cutters make the quickest work of half inch aluminum. Then we'll compare performance on mild and medium hardness metals. Finally, we'll see which cutters can handle some very hard AR500 and which ones go up in smoke. At a price of $29, the least expensive annular cutter we'll be testing is made by Steel Dragon. The size of the bits we'll be testing are 15 16 inch and they all have a three quarter inch weldon shank. Machine finish hole with no reaming needed when using lubricant. The Steel Dragon is made of high speed steel. Cutting depth is two inches. The Steel Dragon does not come with a pilot pin. The pilot pin has several functions, including keeping the cutter centered, allowing coolant to flow to the cutter's tip during drilling, and to eject the slug after drilling. Made in China. And a steel dragon weighs right at 131 grams. If you need to drill a large hole, you could use twist drills. Unfortunately, this takes quite a while since you have to start off with a small drill and gradually use a larger twist drill, or you might use a hole saw. An annular cutter is a lot like a hole saw, but it's a lot more precise and leaves a cleaner finish. For most of the testing, I'll be using a 1 horsepower 15 inch drill press since it offers a more controlled feed mechanism than a mag drill that I recently purchased. I've attached a wheel to the feed arm so that a constant downward force can be applied. Since we're using a large cutter size, I'll slow the RPM down as much as possible to 250 rpm. I'll use cutting oil during each of the tests. Annular cutters won't work in a regular chuck, but an annular cutter arbor is pretty affordable. I went ahead and purchased two different types of arbors since I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use. One of them can be used with coolant, and the other one I'll just be using with cutting oil. Let's kick off our first test with half inch aluminum. I'll start off with 10 pounds on the wheel. With the leverage advantage, that's around 80 pounds of downward force on the annular cutter. If the cutter becomes stuck during the testing, I'll release the cutter and gradually reapply the weight. And with 80 pounds of downward force on the cutter, the Steel Dragon is shredding the half inch aluminum and doing a great job at chip removal. 50 seconds to make the cut. At a price of $30 is this Evolution Cyclone. It includes both the cutter as well as the pilot pin. It's made of premium high speed steel. Evolution claims that their cutters last longer, allowing for more holes per dollar. We're going to test that. The cutter has a one inch cutting depth. The Evolution is made in China. 97.96 grams for the Evolution. Metal temperature does impact cutting speed, so I'll cool the test pieces every time before moving on to the next brand. Just like the Steel Dragon, the Evolution is doing a great job of chip removal. And the Evolution is two seconds faster than the Steel Dragon to move into the lead at 48 seconds. At a price of $33 is this Unibor brand. The Unibor comes with a pilot pin. Made of M2 high-speed steel. Unique geometry provides faster feeds, less friction, and smooth hole finish. It's designed for mild steel, brass, and aluminum. The Unibore is made in UK. 99.68 grams for the Unibore. And the Unibore seems to be making a lot faster progress than the Steel Dragon and the Evolution. And the more aggressive tooth pattern on the Unibore made the fastest cut yet at 35 seconds. At a price of $34 is this SNF, which includes the pilot pin. SNF claims that their cutter is made of a super tough high speed steel. It claims to be designed for durability, wear resistance, high efficiency, and superior service life. It includes a 1 inch cutting depth. The SNF is made in China. 100.22 grams for the SNF. And the SNF is making about the same rate of progress as the Steel Dragon and the Evolution. 49 seconds to make the cut. At a price of $42 is this Hermes brand, made of high speed steel, 2 inch cutting depth. The Hermes includes a pilot pin, designed to leave a smooth finish and excellent durability. There's no information on the packaging regarding where the Hermes brand is manufactured. 132.5 grams for the Hermes. And the Hermes is making very fast progress and is shredding the aluminum. At 36 seconds, that's only 1 second slower than the Unibore. At a price of $43 is this DeWalt brand. The DeWalt does not include a pilot pin. Can be used to drill holes up to 2 inches deep. Made of high speed steel. DeWalt claims that their angular cutter is fast, efficient, and smooth cutting. The DeWalt brand is made in China. 131.61 grams for the DeWalt. And the DeWalt is also making very fast progress just like the Unibore and the Hermes. 38 seconds is good enough to move into the third position behind the Unibore. At a price of $44 is this Eurobore brand. Unlike the other brands, the Eurobore has carbide tips. Carbide tips offer longer life and the ability to drill through harder materials. Includes a pilot pin. The Eurobore is made in Holland. 107.3 grams for the Eurobore. And the Eurobore has carbide teeth. They may not cut the fastest, but they are designed to last a long time and cut through hard material. 50.5 seconds to make the cut. At a price of $183 for 3 bits or $61 each is this Champion brand. Includes sizes 13 16 15 16 and 1 and 1 16 It also comes with a pilot pin. Champion claims that their carbide tip annular cutters last 2 times longer. They can cut through stainless steel and ultra hard exotic alloys. We're going to test that. The cutting depth is 1 inch. There's no information on the packaging regarding where the Champion cutters are made. 84.34 grams for the Champion. Just like the Eurobore, the Champion also has carbide teeth. And the Champion is a little bit faster than the Eurobore at 44 seconds. 
At a price of $237 for 13 cutters or $18 each is this Jesuus brand. The kit also includes two pilot pins. The Jesuus cutters are made of high speed steel, designed for steel plate, aluminum, brass, cast iron, and stainless. It claims to offer burr free holes up to two inches in cutting depth. The Jesuus is made in China. 130.6 grams for the Jesuus. And the Jesuus is making about the same rate of progress as the Steel Dragon in the Evolution. And the Jesuus is right at 46 seconds. At a price of $269 for five cutters or $54 each is this Yugen Copperhead brand. It includes two pilot pins. Durable grade carbide insert for extended life. Sizes 9 16 to 1 and 1 16 Two inch cutting depth. Dual alternating tooth geometry for aggressive cutting. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty confident that the Yugen Copperheads are made in USA. 120.51 grams for the Copperhead. Just like the Yurbor and the Champion, the Copperhead has carbide teeth and they need a little bit more time to make the cut at 64 seconds. At a price of $309 for nine cutters or $34 each is this Milwaukee brand. Sizes half inch to one and one sixteenth. 20% thinner wall construction for faster cutting. Milwaukee claims that their cutters have a proprietary steel and three hardness zones. The cutting depth is up to two inches. The Milwaukee cutters are made in Germany. 123.54 grams for the Milwaukee. And the Milwaukee's 20% thinner wall construction made a huge difference. 28.7 seconds is by far the fastest time yet. At a price of $362 for 11 cutters or $33 each is this slugger that's made by Fine. All the cutters made by Fine come with a protective coating made of M2 high-speed steel. Multiple cutting edges that create accurate, burr-free, high-quality holes. It claims to drill holes three times faster than twist drills. Sizes 7 16 to 1 and 1 16 The Fine brand is made in USA. 97.9 .9 grams for the Fine. And the slugger is making pretty quick work of the aluminum, but not quite as fast as the Milwaukee. 39 seconds is still a pretty fast time. Compared to twist drills or a hole saw, check out the incredibly smooth finish made by the annular cutters. All the brands did a terrific job as far as smoothness. And the Evolution is 1 1 28th of an inch undersized and the Unibore is 1 1 28th too large. All the other brands are right at 15 16 of an inch. If you're looking for an annular cutter for soft metals, the Milwaukee has a very aggressive cutting design and made the fastest cut in 28.7 seconds. Unibore finished in second at 35 seconds, Hermes 36, Dewalt 38, and Slugger 39 seconds. Let's move on to 3 8 inch mild steel. At 15 pounds of the feed wheel, it's very close to 110 pounds of downward force. And the cutting oil is doing a great job of keeping the Steel Dragon cool. And the Steel Dragon made the cut in 31 seconds. And it did experience a minor chip on one of the teeth. And the Evolution was two seconds faster than the Steel Dragon in the first test and is six seconds faster cutting through the mild steel at 25 seconds. However, the Evolution did experience a couple of chipped teeth. And the Unibore made the second fastest cut in the last event and it's once again very fast with the mild steel at 23.4 seconds to move into the lead. There aren't any chipped teeth with the Unibore but there is some wear. And the SNF was about the same speed as the Steel Dragon and the Evolution at 25.9 seconds. The cutters did experience some minor chips and some sharpness loss. And the Hermes was in the top five cutting through the aluminum but the mild steel held it back a little bit at 28 seconds. The Hermes did lose some sharpness and has a couple of chips. And the Dewalt was in the top five in the previous test but it lost a step with the mild steel. And the Dewalt became stuck at breakthrough at 26.7 seconds. So minor wear and tear to the Dewalt. And the carbide teeth on the Eurobore have a much less aggressive tooth geometry compared to the high speed steel cutters. 29.3 seconds to make the cut and the carbide teeth still look as good as new. And the champion made faster progress than the Eurobore with the aluminum and is faster in the mild steel at 25.2 seconds. And the champion still looks as good as new. And Adjustu has gained a step on the competition in mild steel, making the second fastest time yet in only 23.7 seconds. Just some very minor wear and tear to the Gestuous. And the Copperhead made the slowest cut in aluminum and it made the slowest cut in mild steel in 31.3 seconds. However, the Copperhead's teeth held up very well and still look as good as new. And the Milwaukee did a terrific job cutting through aluminum, but it lost a couple of steps cutting through mild steel, 28.8 seconds. Unfortunately, the Milwaukee looks like it lost quite a bit of sharpness. And the Slugger made pretty good speed cutting through the mild steel in 25.8 seconds. However, the Slugger did experience a chip as well as some sharpness loss. Once again, all the cutters left a very nice looking finish. So much nicer finish compared to twist drills or hole saws. So the Unibore came in first at 23.4 seconds, but the Jesuits did almost as well at 23.7. Evolution 25, Champion 25.2, and Slugger 25.8 seconds. Let's move on to some quarter inch 4140, which is quite a bit harder than mild steel. With harder steel, we should add some weight, so 17 17.5 pounds of weight on the feed wheel is about 130 pounds of downward force. After we cut through 4140 and spring steel, we'll come back to the mild steel and see how much wear and tear took place. And the Steel Dragon performed well, cutting through the quarter inch medium hardness steel in 14.85 seconds. And the Evolution is about a second faster than the Steel Dragon at 13.9 seconds to make the cut. And the Unibore continues to cut faster than the Steel Dragon in the Evolution, making the cut in 12.5 seconds. 
And the SNF isn't quite as fast as the Unibore at 13.4 seconds, or about 1.5 seconds faster than the Steel Dragon. And the Hermes moves into a two-way tie with the SNF at 13.4 seconds to move into second place behind the Unibor. And the Dewalt just made the second fastest pass yet at 12.8 seconds just behind the Unibor. And the carbide tips on the Eurobore destroyed the 4140 steel and made the fastest time yet in only 12.1 seconds to take the lead from the Unibor. And the carbide teeth on the champion cut even faster than the Eurobore at 11.1 seconds to take over first place. And the high-speed steel cutters on the Gestuous are beginning to lose a little bit of speed compared to the top brands at 14.35 seconds. And the carbide tooth copperhead sunk his teeth into the 4140, but it isn't quite as fast as the Eurobore and the champion at 13.8 seconds. Just like the Jesuits, the high-speed steel Milwaukee lost quite a bit of speed, making the cut in 13.8 seconds. And the 4140 really took a toll on the slugger, causing it to lose a couple of steps at 14.8 seconds. And the cutters are still leaving a very clean finish. And the cutters with carbide teeth are really beginning to shine with medium hardness steel, and the champion came out on top at 11.1 .1 seconds, and the Eurobore finished in second at 12.1. The Unibore has the high-speed steel teeth, and it finished in third at 12.5, and Dewalt 12.8 seconds. Spring steel is even harder than 4140, so let's stay with 17.5 pounds on the feed wheel and see how long it takes to cut through 716th spring steel. And the Steel Dragon is really beginning to lose cutting speed as the spring steel is inflicting damage to the high-speed cutters. 42.7 seconds to make the cut. Even though it lost speed, I'm still impressed with the quality and precision of cut. And there's quite a bit of visible damage to the cutters on the Steel Dragon. And the Evolution is also experiencing a performance loss cutting through the spring steel, but it's still faster than the Steel Dragon at 38.2 seconds. And the cutters appear to be in a little bit better shape than the Steel Dragons. Up until now, the Unibor has been faster than the Steel Dragon and the Evolution, but the spring steel has taken a toll on the Unibor. 54.2 seconds or 12 seconds slower than the Steel Dragon. And the Unibor has lost a lot of sharpness from cutting through the spring steel. Just like the Unibor, the spring steel is inflicting a lot of damage to the SNF cutters. 51.8 seconds to make the cut. Quite a bit of visible wear and tear to the SNF. And the Hermes held up well with the 4140, and it made the fastest cut yet through the spring steel in only 36.2 seconds to take the lead from the Evolution. However, there is some visible wear and tear to the cutters. Just like with the Unibor, the spring steel is really slowing down the Dewalt. 53.1 seconds is the second slowest time yet. And there's quite a bit of visible wear and tear to the cutters on the Dewalt. And the Eurobore is shredding the spring steel quickly, and the drill press is struggling to make enough torque to keep the Eurobore going. I had to release the bit several times, which really slowed the cut. And the Eurobore made the fastest cut yet in only 34 seconds. And the cutters are still very sharp without any chips. Just like the Eurobore, the champion is shredding the spring steel quickly and the drill press is struggling to make enough torque to keep the champion going without a little help. And the champion is even faster than the Eurobore at 31 seconds. Very impressive. And the champion's cutters are still in great shape. Just like the Steel Dragon, the Gestuous lost quite a bit of cutting speed on the spring steel at 40.5 seconds. And there's quite a bit of visible wear to the cutters. Just like the Eurobore and the Champion, the drill press doesn't make enough torque to keep the Copperhead in action without some help. And the Copperhead ties the Champion for first place at 31 seconds. And the cutters are still in very good condition. And the spring steel is just way too hard for the cutters on the Milwaukee. Unfortunately, I had to stop the test. And the cutters on the Milwaukee are completely wiped out from the spring steel. Just like the Unibore, the Slugger lost a lot of cutting speed with the spring steel, finally making the cut in 54.5 seconds. Unfortunately, the cutters are now in pretty poor condition. So the Carbide Tooth Champion and the Copperhead Cutters tied for first at 31 seconds. The Carbide Tooth Eurobore was just about as fast at 34 seconds, Hermes 36.2, and Evolution 38.2 seconds. Since we're using mild steel as our control, let's once again cut through the mild steel with the cutters and see how much performance loss occurs with 15 pounds of downward force on the feed wheel. In the first attempt, the Steel Dragon cut through the mild steel in 31 seconds, and it needed 35.3 seconds this time, which is a 13.9% loss in cutting speed. And the Evolution first cut through the mild steel in 25 seconds, and it made the cut this time at 30.1 seconds. So that's about 20% longer this time compared to the last. And the Unibore was the fastest cutter at 23.4 seconds with mild steel, and it needed 70% longer this time at almost 40 seconds. The SNF originally performed about the same as the Evolution at 25.9 seconds, and it needs 34% longer to make the cut this time at 34.8 seconds. And the Hermes first cut through the mild steel in 28 seconds, and it took over 6 seconds longer this time at 34.3. And the Dewalt was pretty fast through the mild steel in the first attempt, but it took 31% longer to make the cut this time at 35 seconds. And the Eurobore first cut through the mild steel in 29.3 seconds, and it's almost as fast this time at 31.2 seconds. Very impressive. That's only 6.5% slower than best yet. Just like the Eurobore, the carbide cutters on the Champion are still very sharp, making the fastest cut yet in 27.6 seconds, or 2.4 seconds slower than the first attempt. 
And the 4140 spring steel really took a toll on the Jesuits. 34.2 seconds is 44.3% slower than the baseline cut. Just like with the Eurobore and the Champion, the cutters on the Copperhead held up extremely well, making the cut in 33.1 seconds or only 5.75% slower than the baseline. Unfortunately, the cutters on the Milwaukee are finished and the Milwaukee can't make the cut. And the Slugger made a pretty quick baseline cut at 25.8 seconds, and it still made a pretty quick cut this time at 32.8 seconds. When it comes to annular cutters, durability is a huge deal, and the Copperhead experienced the least amount of performance loss at only 5.75%. However, the much more affordable Eurobor performed almost as well at 6.48, and Champion 9.52%. So the top three finishers have carbide teeth. This half-inch AR500 is designed to stop bullets, and it's nearly impossible to drill because it's so hard and it work hardens quickly. Since the drill press doesn't make enough torque, let's use this mag drill. I'll be using coolant that's designed for use with annular cutters. To keep the metal from work hardening, I'll be applying as much force as the drill will allow. I have to admit, I'm pretty surprised that the Steel Dragon is making such good progress through the AR500. And the Steel Dragon finally gave up and is no longer making progress after 40 seconds. However, it did make it about two-thirds of the way through the AR500. Unfortunately, but not surprisingly, the cutters are now in pretty bad shape. And the Evolution has outperformed the Steel Dragon during most of the testing and it's performing very well on the AR500. Just like the Steel Dragon, the Evolution ran out of steam at around 40 seconds. The hole drilled by the Evolution is on the right and the Evolution did make a little bit more progress than the Steel Dragon. The cutters are now in pretty bad shape. On half inch steel plate, which is what we're using as our base support, the electromagnet on the drill has around 740 pounds of holding force. However, that wasn't enough to keep the Unibore from walking. And the Unibore is just too dull to take a bite out of the AR500 and pretty much just scratch the paint. Just like the Unibore, the SNF is pretty much used up and was about out of steam before the test started. However, it did make a little bit more progress than the Unibore. The cutters are in very bad shape. Just like the Steel Dragon in the Evolution, the Hermes is off to a pretty good start. And the Hermes lasted around 40 seconds before progress suddenly came to a stop. Looking at cutting depth, the Hermes finished in third place behind the Steel Dragon and the Evolution. The cutters have definitely seen better days. Even with around 500 pounds of downward force on the cutters, the Dewalt couldn't take a bite out of the AR500. It made about the same amount of progress as the SNF, and the cutters are used up. And the AR500 is no longer laughing as the carbide teeth on the Eurobor begin shredding the steel. And the Eurobor cut to the AR500 in 30.1 seconds. Very impressive. And the carbide teeth on the Eurobor are still in very good condition with just a small amount of wear. And the champion put the AR500 on notice immediately and went to work ripping through the half inch steel in only 24 seconds to take the lead from the Eurobor. Very impressive. And the cutters on the Champion are still in very good shape with only minor wear and tear. And it was pretty much over before it started with the Jesuits, and the AR500 is just way too hard for the high-speed steel cutters. While the Jesuits did leave some claw marks, it came at a pretty big price as the AR500 wiped out the cutters. And the Copperhead sunk its fangs into the AR500 and dealt a lethal strike in only 34.6 seconds or about 10 seconds slower than the Champion. Very clean hole and the Copperhead experienced only minor wear and tear to the cutters. And the Milwaukee is used up, but let's try it anyway. Other than scratching the paint, no harm to the AR500 and the Milwaukee cutters are finished. And the Slugger took a final swing at the AR500 and it didn't go well with the cutters walking sideways and failing to make any progress. Other than scratching the surface, the AR500 held up just fine and the cutters on the Slugger are wiped out. For soft metals like aluminum or mild steel, the high speed steel cutters are just fine. However, for medium or hard metals, the performance and durability of the carbide cutters are simply amazing. Champion definitely seems to make the best cutter, but it is very expensive. For that reason, I would likely go with the Eurobore if the price was right. If I had to select a high-speed steel cutter for aluminum or mild steel, I would go with the Evolution. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.